greetings to you. Every single person bless you in Jesus' mighty name. As you're joining in, share this broadcast, invite your followers, and say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. I receive the righteous man's reward in Jesus' name. Everybody, get the gospel out. This is going to be powerful. It's going to be very powerful on there. God, as you're joining in, share this broadcast, invite your followers. I'm running after you, I'm running after you, I'll run, I'm running after you, I'm running after you, I'll run.
running after you I'm running after you I'll run I'm running after you I'm running after you I'm running after you Saints, let me just say this to you. And this is going to be a powerful teaching. This is going to be glorious. But I, I want you to always remember this. That problems is not confirmation that God wants you to leave a place. Problems is not always confirmation that God wants you to leave a place. Problems is actually a confirmation most times that you're supposed to stay and persevere in an area. Now, saints, I've been studying something mighty on here, and this is going to be a real blessing to you. This is going to be a blessing. Now, saints, I want to tell you this. If you don't got Periscope, you missing out. Every single day, I'm live. Like, if you need a fresh word from God, you, you, you want to hear something fresh from the Father that's in line with the word of God and is a revelation and it's powerful and it'll change your life, tune in to me live on Periscope. Don't miss it. You Listen, you ain't even got to like me. The word that I speak on there is 
life changing. And, and I feel the anointing as I'm ministering on this. So I want you to really get the app and watch the replay. Listen to all the broadcasts that I got there. I'm leaving the broadcast there. And uh, also, I want to thank all of you all that are working to get our stuff on YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, you're such a blessing to me. I love you. And I know I have several people in my ministry. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you so much for every time getting my broadcast on YouTube. Also, I have YouTube programs that I'm about to release on my personal page. That page been dry. But I'm coming on there now. I'm going to start doing broadcasts on there. It's going to be powerful. The broadcast that I'm going to have on my YouTube pages. I'll put the link on this page right here so that when the video does come, you'll be able to watch the video. It's powerful. I have done a lot of secretive videos that I didn't release nowhere. And I'm going to release it on. Uh, I'm going to release it and it's going to be powerful and look forward to it. I'm going to be releasing it in a couple days. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. 
Now, saints, remember in Genesis, the word of God declared that to subdue the earth. God was speaking to Adam to subdue the earth. And that was Genesis chapter one, verse 28 and on. Let's read what it said there. It says Genesis chapter one, verse 28. Look what it says right here. May I feel like oil running down my head. It's powerful as I was worshiping that. How many of you are, if you ever focus on the Lord while you're praising him and celebrating him, there'll be a tangible anointing that begins to flow on your physical body and it's not always the physical body. You shouldn't aim for that, but it will just happen simultaneously because really the anointing flows in your spirit, man. It flows off of revelation. It flows off of wisdom, off of knowledge, the knowledge of God. Now, and that's why Apostle Paul said, casting down imaginations and high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God because the knowledge of God is carrying God's power, his presence, his uh his spirit is in the knowledge. That's why King Jesus came on the scene and started teaching them knowledge because he was letting them carry him through that knowledge. When, when King Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, what he was saying, I want you to stay in the knowledge that I have given to you. Though you may be knowledgeable of something else, don't yield to that knowledge. He was saying, stay in the knowledge that I have given to you, the right knowledge, the knowledge of truth, the knowledge that brings peace, the knowledge that gives you dominion. Now, let's go ahead. Genesis chapter one, verse 28. Look what it says here. It says, um, God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, which we all know that scripture and replenish the earth and subdue the earth. Now, saints, I'm in Genesis chapter one, verse 28. Genesis chapter one, verse 28. The Lord tells him to subdue the earth. Now, saints, this is so powerful because I was studying this and studying the depth of what this means. Because the word subdue was what God used, so it has meaning to it why he used that word. Now, saints, I want you to see this. One of the words for subdue in the, in the, in the Hebrew is humble. I want you to hear this. One of the definitions of subdue in the Hebrew is humble. Now, people of God, I want you to see this. Look, so when God said to subdue, subdue, he was saying that the earth, it has to be humbled by you. Now, saints, if the earth can be humbled that means that the earth can be in pride as well. Oh my God. So people of God, imagine this. Remember when Adam was created around that time and all this stuff and, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Look at the earth. The earth is covered by darkness. And you know darkness represents the satanic kingdom. So the earth is covered by pride because that's what Lucifer did to get it based. So imagine this, people of God, the earth is in pride. So God sends a man made in his image and likeness to humble the earth. <laughs> Saints, and, and watch this here. Now you understand why King Jesus cursed a fig tree, because that fig tree needed to be humbled. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. The fig tree needed to be humbled, so King Jesus looked at it, saw that it was proud, and cursed it. That's the same thing Elisha did with the 42 children. I think it was 42 children. That he called 
a curse upon them, and the she bears, two she bears came out and ate them because they was proud. Saints, one of the definitions of subdue in the Hebrew is humble. The fact that Genesis 1 28, God says to subdue the earth, it shows you that the earth has a realm of pride to it. You have to humble the earth by subduing the earth with the word of God in your mouth, with the instructions that God will give to you, and with praising God, giving God thanks, and using your weapons. Now, saints, this broadcast is so deep because I'm going to share with you some revelations that's going to be shocking. And I'm already doing it. <laughs> now, look at this here. It means to humble. Now, I want you to see this. One of the definitions of subdue is also rape. Now, saints, if you understand what the word rape, we use rape, is when a man or a woman, they go and they take someone else and cause them to commit a sexual act with them without the person's consent. But saints, I want to show you this, that rape is forceful intimacy. So, so God created Adam to force the earth to become intimate with his anointing. God created Adam to train the earth how to become intimate with his grace, with his dominion, with his wisdom, with his inheritance, forcefully. Which shows you why in the word of God, in the gospels, it said the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. That violent is like you're raping. You're taking it by force. So it's a form of rape. And this is how you have to get about your peace. You can't let things take your peace. You have to rape peace. When I say that, you forcefully make peace be intimate with your mind. Even though you hear all type of reports, you make peace submit itself to you and stay within you and move with you. The same way with depression, you have to be forceful and rape joy. You have to cause joy to be intimate with you. No matter how many bad things come or how many mindsets come that make you think about things that's going to weaken your energy or your stamina or your endurance, you got to rape the, pe the joy. Now, saints, I'm about to say something to you that's shocking. The woman with the issue of blood, she raped Jesus's garment. She subdued his garment because saints, she did not have permission according to his mouth, according to him uh, inviting her. But she subdued the garment. She raped it and took the power that was in there. And Jesus said, who touched me? The same way someone, if they're being raped, they can make a plea towards who's touching them. Why are you touching me? Who's touching me? So watch this, people of God. What this woman with the issue of blood, she yielded to the, the she yielded to the subduing anointing. Lebros to ponde reva kapara makata repekete. She 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 yielded to the subduing anointing because she was able to rape that garment, take it by force and cause it to become intimate with her situation. Her situation had an issue, but she knew that that garment had no issues. It was an issue solver. It was an issue dissolver. So she went and took that garment against its will without its permission and she wrapped that garment. She touched it. And now... She's being intimate with the healing that's in that garment. Saints, why do you think Apostle Paul sent out handkerchiefs?
Why do you think that Apostle Paul took the handkerchiefs and sent it out? He was subduing people's sickness with that handkerchief. Think about this. Those people had all type of illnesses in their body. But once that handkerchief touched their body, that apron touched their body, that issue left them. What was going on? The subduing anointing was at work. Now, people of God, the fact that you call upon the name of the Lord and you receive the presence of God in your life and you choose to live a life of the Holy Spirit, you now have subduing authority. Now, saints, let's look at this here. And, and let me just say this to you. If, if you're listening to me in the flesh, you're not going to understand this. Uh, and let me just say this. Number two, stop acquainting everything that you hear with your experiences. Some of you all probably got raped when you was younger. This word not in alignment with that experience. Let the word of God purge you of how you think. That's why the devil let people do stuff to you because he wants you to not be able to receive the word because of your experiences. If you think about it, how many people are not hearing the word of God because you're acquainting the word to what you experience? And that was the devil's whole goal. The devil gave us the, uh, uh, the devil pit those situations in your life so that you would not receive the word when it comes because you're going to acquaint it to something that was traumatic. But let the word purge you. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, how can a young man cleanse his way but by giving heed to the word of God? Nevertheless, whether you can receive it or not, <laughs> I'm still going to keep on preaching. <laughs> now watch this here. Saints, one of the words for subdue in the Hebrew is overwhelm. So the fact that the Lord told uh, Adam to subdue the earth, here's what you got to do. You got to learn how to overwhelm your situations with God's word. You can't see. I want you to see this people of God. The fact that. One of the Hebrew words for subdue is overwhelm. It shows you that this is what the enemy has been doing with situations that you face in life. That's why you get stressed out. That's why you get worried. That's why you get fearful. Because the, the, the situation that you experience has been a satanic device to overwhelm you so that you can't think. But the fact that overwhelm is one of the words... In Hebrew, for the word subdue, it shows you that when you are moving in a subduing anointing, you don't get overwhelmed by life. You overwhelm life. You don't get overwhelmed by sickness. You overwhelm sickness. You don't get overwhelmed with poverty. You overwhelm poverty. You don't get overwhelmed with insecurity. You overwhelm insecurity with confidence. You overwhelm fear with trust. You overwhelm weakness with power. You overwhelm darkness with light. You overwhelm prayerlessness with hunger and thirst. Are you seeing this? You overwhelm bondage with decreeing. Now, people of God, look at this here. The fact that one of the Hebrew words for subdue is overwhelm. It shows that you were the one that was supposed to stress Satan out. The things that happened to you in life wasn't supposed to overtake your mind and stress you out. You were supposed to stress the devil out. It was your authority to bring headaches to the devil. You're supposed to overwhelm whatever situation looked like it's stagnant with the word of God. You're supposed to overwhelm it. 
Don't let it overwhelm you. When you look at your bank account and you don't see money, you decree money into that bank account. And then you listen to the spirit of God on how he wants you to sow, how he wants you to honor him, how he wants you to follow him. The same way with bad habits and bad addictions and bad mindsets. You don't let those bad addictions, bad habits, bad mindsets overwhelm you. You overwhelm it by decreeing who you are in Jesus. Now, saints, if you remember, what did Satan do after the 40 day and 40 night fast? He told King Jesus, he said, if thou be the son of God, look at the direction that he targets. Jesus is the son of God and he's telling him if thou be a son of God. So what he's trying to overwhelm Jesus with confusion. So Jesus, instead of being overwhelmed with confusion, overwhelmed Satan with clarity. If thou be the son of God, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Look how King Jesus, instead of being overwhelmed by what the devil is doing to him, he overwhelms the devil. So people of God, when stuff happened to you in life, you don't let what's happening to you overwhelm you. Subdue in the Hebrew, one of the words is overwhelmed. Because you supposed to overwhelm what's trying to overwhelm you. When King Jesus went to sleep in the boat, remember it was the disciples that got overwhelmed by the storm. And what did King Jesus do? The Bible said he rebuked the winds and the waves. So he overwhelmed the storm. Oh. The storm was overwhelming the disciples' words. But Jesus' word went and overwhelmed the storms. My God. And so when Joseph in Genesis, his brother stole him into the pit, the pit is supposed to overwhelm him. But instead he goes into Potiphar's house and he overwhelms all poverty spirits, all depression spirits, all evil spirits. And he causes Potiphar's house to have more money than it ever had. He causes increase in wealth to come to Potiphar's house. What's going on people of God? Instead of Joseph being overwhelmed by what his brothers did to him, he's overwhelmed by what God is doing through him. The same way Daniel, they passed the law to overwhelm Daniel to not pray. So he opens up the window and he prays three times because he's overwhelming their law with his grace. And that's why Romans say that you're not underneath the law, you underneath grace. Wow. Because grace is when you overwhelm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It bring me it bring me to Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Remember the Bible said the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. See the law of sin and death is a law that the prince of the power of the air has set up. So the law of sin and death is a law that the devil has set up so that you won't move in your law of the spirit of life. And see, the spirit of life doesn't just have a position. It causes you to decree things. That's why in John 6, 63, he said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life because the word will come out of your mouth when you're moving in the spirit of life. If you listening to me, saints, there's an anointing swirling on this line. There's an anointing swirling on this line because the word of the living God is sitting on you. I see Satan falling like lightning. One of the words for, for subduing the Hebrew is outweigh. Outweigh. So, so when the Lord told him to subdue the earth in Genesis 1, 28, he was telling him, I want you to outweigh what the earth will bring. What will happen in the earth. I want you to outweigh it because you got something heavier than every attack. You got something heavier than every demon. 
something heavier than every opposition, something heavier than every principality and power and ruler of the darkness of this age and spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. You got the power to subdue, meaning that you got a heavier weight operating on you than any weight that Satan will try to pit on you. And saints, it brings me to what King Jesus said. He said, come learn of me. He said, my yoke is easy. And what, what, what else did he say? He said, my burden is light. So saints, when we deal with outweigh, which is one of the Hebrew definitions of subdue, outweigh, and we see that that weight, a part of it is the burden that God will give to you. So King Jesus will give you a burden that will remove every burden that Satan will send your way. And saints, there's a burden called the word of the living God inside of your mouth. That if you decree a thing, it shall be established. If you learn how to prophesy and you learn how to govern your atmosphere with praise and thanksgiving. And you receive the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. See, the garment of praise outweighs heaviness. So saints, praise subdues. The garment of praise, it, 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 is a, it is a heavy weight in the spirit and it's more weightier. It outweighs heaviness. Think about this. So in Isaiah 61, he talked about pinning on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness because the spirit of heaviness is in the law of sin and death, which is in Romans 8 too. But the garment of praise is in the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life, which is also in Romans 8 too. And the garment of praise, when you put it on, every garment of heaviness that Satan would try to put on you breaks. So why don't you praise God more? Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. I praise you, Father, for life. I praise you, Father, for everything that you... Saints, I want to say this to you. You know why the devil can't kill you? You know why the devil can't kill me? Because my life is being used by God. I chose the garments of the spirit. When you receive the garments, the law of the spirit of life, you're going to live. You can't die. You're going to declare the what? The glory, the works of the Lord. Because that's, that's, that's what happens when you are subduing spirit. See, you got to learn that you are subduing spirit. So, so when, when sickness come your way, outweigh that sickness with health. Outweigh. And then what's the other word in Hebrew for subdue? Overwhelm. So, so saints, this is why you have to have diligence because you can't overwhelm the devil until you keep on doing what God taught you to do. See, some of you are never broke open in your sowing. Because you never knew what it means to keep on sowing your way out into your man of God. And so you never over overwhelm the devil with your system of seed time and harvest. You never overwhelm the devil with your system of sowing and reaping. So you never broke open financially. But if you learn how to overwhelm and outweigh the devil with your financial weapons, with your financial wisdom, with your financial God. Because Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai. Yeah, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. This, this is a dimension. He's the God of abundance. He's the God of more than enough. Your cup runneth over, Psalm 23. You never knew what it meant to be liberated from smoking, drinking, thinking wrong thoughts, having toxic relationships, staying stagnated in one position. You never knew what that means to be like that. But if you will learn how to outweigh distractions, with focusing on the word, with focusing on prayer, with focusing and praying in tongues. And if you learn how to pray in tongues for long enough and let the mysteries of God sit inside of you, you will outweigh every confusion. You will outweigh all depression. You will outweigh all wrong and toxic thinking. So you have to learn how to subdue, which is outweigh what the devil has been trying to weigh you down with. Wow. Saints, are you catching this? This is so powerful to me. You have to learn how to outweigh what the devil has been outweighing you with. 
The same thing that he been overwhelming you with, you got something from the Lord Jesus Christ to outweigh him out. You, the same way he been overwhelming you with something, you got something in the kingdom of God to overwhelm him. You got an overwhelming weapon in the spirit that you have to learn how to release and every demon shall flee. Now saints, even submission it outweighs the devil's attacks. Submission. Submission even outweighs the devil's voice because the Bible said if you submit yourself unto God, you resist the devil, he shall what? Flee from you. Why is he fleeing? Because he's outweighed. Why is he fleeing from you? Because you are outweighing him. You're overwhelming him. So he flees because he is afraid of what you have learned, what you have mastered in the spirit in your kingdom. Now you're releasing it to him and he can't stand it. Oh, my kara, pa kara, ma kara. Repekendele vosi kandele vaya. Oh my God, my God, my God. Saints, uh, 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 uh. another word for subdue is in the Hebrew, determine. So, so the truth of the matter is God was given Adam the ability to determine what occurs on the earth. In his life, his life was not in the hands of sickness. His life was not in the hands of flesh and blood. His life was not in the hands of, 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 of wickedness or curses or sicknesses or diseases or poverty or lack or darkness. His life was determined by the anointing that he carried. Stop letting the devil determine what type of life you live. Don't let him determine how you feel 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 365 days in a year. Stop letting the enemy determine how you think, determine how much anointing you're able to access. You got access to all of the oil of God. You got access to the true and living God, the burden of moving, yoke destroying, miracle working, salvation producing, blessing of a taking, grace abounding, abundant life giving, Holy Ghost power living on the inside of you. You got access to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You got access to all of the Godhead. You got access to all of the kingdom, the Holy of Holies, the inner court, the outer court. You have access to the priestly anointing. You have access to the kingly anointing for he has made us kings and priests unto our God. Revelation chapter one, verse five and six. You have access to everything. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness in Peter chapter one, verse three. I think that's second Peter chapter one, verse three. Now you have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter two. Now all these different realms of God has been given unto you. In John, the gospels, it says, and of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace. And of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace. So now you have access to all of God's fullness. So now you determine your health. Subdue in the Hebrew, one of the definitions. I feel the anointing going down my hand, man. Because the power of God fell as I was ministering on here. There's some of you all watching me right now. There's an anointing on here for you to receive your healing. There's an anointing on here for you to receive wealth. There's an anointing on you on, on here for you to receive deliverance, for you to receive angels, for you to receive the government of the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive the power of the Holy Ghost, to receive a new season in the spirit. There is an abundance of rain on here right now. And, and watch this here. This is why King Jesus had determined whether or not Lazarus would live because that's the subduing anointing. That's why he said Lazarus come forth. It was the subduing anointing. 
That's why King Jesus told Lazarus, come forth, because he determined that even though you died and you've been in that grave for four days, I have determined that you are supposed to live. And he resurrected Lazarus. This same Jesus has given you his same spirit. Now, if this same spirit that rose King Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body, it shall quicken you. Now, saints, to be quickened by the spirit of God, do you know what this means? It means that the spirit of God is going to make you alert of the authority that you have. That means that the spirit of the Lord is going to cause you to identify the dominion you carry, the access you have, the favor you're carrying, the graces that have been made available to you. The word of God says something powerful that is the manifold grace of God. That means that the grace of God was not just sent to save you from sin. It's not just by grace you are saved. By grace you are made rich. That 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says that you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor, that through his poverty, you might be made rich. But it firstly said, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it lets you see that grace has manifold functionalities, assignments, purposes. So grace don't just come to save you from a bad habit. It come to save you from poverty. It come to save you from your debts. It come to save you from homelessness. There's a grace to save you from, from wrong thoughts. There's a grace to save you from wrong people, wrong company, wrong desires, wrong appetites, wrong dreams at night. There's a grace that protects you during your sleep. There's a grace that keeps you from car accidents. There's a grace for protection. There's a grace for tongues. There's a grace for the interpretation of tongues. There's a grace for you to understand the mysteries of God. There's a grace to be still and know that I'm God. There's a grace for trust. There's a grace for forgiveness. Father, I receive the manifold grace of God on my life. There's an anointing flowing. Father, I receive the manifold grace of God. There's an anointing flowing. Father, I receive the manifold grace of God in my life. If you're watching this broadcast, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord. Say, King Jesus, I repent of my sin. Come into my heart and take me over. Possess me and use me for your glory. Bless you in Jesus' name. Follow me on Periscope, Prophet Joshua Holmes.